so the subject we are starting am i audible at the back the subject we are starting today is called corporate finance so now how i want you to look at this subject number 1 it's the easiest subject of all the 10 subjects at cfl level 1 which means uh, a day before the exam this is one of those subjects where you would be least worried of because fairly intuitive and a lot of common sense involved also a lot of calculations second that cfa as a program is mostly focused on financial services sector okay so what does it mean let's say you are analyzing infosys now in most of the candidates who would pick up jobs after doing this program when they are analyzing infosys they are not analyzing infosys so that they can help infosys they are analyzing infosys so that they can decide whether they should put money into infosys are you following me or they should put money into that particular stock the idea of corporate finances that when you are analyzing a stock or when you are analyzing a scenario you want to help that particular company take decisions about it so the way i look at syllabus those nine subjects that we have apart from corporate finance those are majorly focused on financial services sector but corporate finance as a whole is actually focused on helping those organizations so if you ever decide to work in corporate finance area then you would be working as a part of an organization let it be apple let it be mcdonalds infosys sbi and then you would help them take different category of decisions okay so in your notes the first thing that we write down is capital budgeting now as we discussed earlier capital budgeting is all about taking decisions on whether a particular particular project is financially feasible so i'm writing a scenario on my screen you tell me if that's feasible or not feasible this is time 0 time 1 2 3 you invested 1000 into a particular business project and the amount of profit that you are going to make let us say this is 500 500 and 500 for each of the three years and then the project will close down i am repeating this again you invested 1000 worth of cash at time 0 and then you are expecting to receive 500 500 500 sorry you are expecting to make profit of 500 500 500 is this project financially feasible no how many of you feel yes how many of you feel no how many of you feel can't say okay the answer is can't say there are two things that are missing right now number 1 that the capital budgeting decisions going forward will never be taken based on how much profit you've earned irrelevant it does not matter how much profit you earn because profit is an accounting number and the same business two accountant can come up with different profit numbers because it's a, it's a game of your assumptions and estimates so all capital bu budgeting decisions will always be taken on the basis of how much cash you've earned are we together on this so profit is irrelevant what we need here is the amount of cash let us say amount of cash is 500 500 and 500 the data is still inadequate because the amount is coming in in different point of time so we cannot add up this 1500 and say that we are receiving more so what we will have to do is convert this amount to a single point of time let us say appropriate discount rate is 10% then how do you compare that 1000 is going out at time 0 this 500 you will take backwards for one year this 500 you will take backwards for 2 years this 500 you will take backwards for 3 years take a total of all the three and then see on today basis am i receiving more or am i receiving less is that making sense to you so let's do it together on your financial calculators second clear tvm second clear tvm 
फाइव हंड्रेड फ्यूचर वैल्यू फाइव हंड्रेड फ्यूचर वैल्यू वन एज एन टेन एज आई वाई कंप्यूट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू हाउ मच फोर फोर्टी फोर फिफ्टी फोर नाउ डोंट डू सेकेंड क्लियर टीवीएम जस्ट से टू एज एन ओवर राइट द प्रीवियस वन से टू एज एन कंप्यूट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू फोर वन थ्री एंड नाउ से थ्री एज एन कंप्यूट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू थ्री सेवन फाइव सो वी हैव प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ दीज थ्री अमाउंट्स नाउ एड अप ऑल द थ्री ट्वेल्व फोर्टी थ्री सो हाउ डू यू इंटरप्रेट दिस सिनारियो दैट ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर बिजनेस प्रोजेक्ट एट टाइम जीरो द अमाउंट दैट आई वुड बी रिक्वायर्ड टू इन्वेस्ट इज वन थाउजेंड बट टाइम जीरो इक्वेलेंट अमाउंट दैट आई एम रिसीविंग इज हाउ मच वन टू फोर थ्री सो शुड वी डू दिस प्रोजेक्ट और शुड वी नॉट वी शुड बिकॉज वी आर रिसीविंग मोर सो दैट द फर्स्ट फॉर्मूला दैट वी आर लर्निंग फॉर द डे that what we calculate in these kind of scenarios is called as npv net present value which would be calculated as present value of inflows minus present value of outflows and present value of inflow in this case is 1243 minus outflow of 1000 and therefore we would say that since npv is pro positive project is financially feasible let's see if we can do one more so now i this time i want you you to give it a shot let us say time zero we have invested 1500 time one we have received 800 time two 900 and time 3 we've received 1000 discount rate is 10% calculate a npv for this project mm -hmm. 722 okay How much is the present value of eight hundred for one year at the rate of ten percent? Seven twenty seven. How much is the present value of nine hundred? Seven forty three. And present value of one thousand for three years? Seven fifty one. What is the total of these three amounts? S plus seven forty three plus seven fifty one. Two two, two two, and therefore your NPV is two 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 minus fifteen hundred, which will get us seven twenty two. Now there is also a direct way through which you can do it on your financial calculator. In the second row of your calculator, do you see a CF button? So press the CF button first. Once you've done that, then say second and clear walk. Second is the greyish button. Clear walk is first column, last button. Second clear walk. Is it done? Now in cash flow zero, is it showing CF zero? Say fifteen hundred negative enter. Fifteen hundred negative enter. Then press downward arrow, and come on to cash flow one. How much we should enter now? So eight hundred enter. Then come on to downward arrow one more time. Then say nine hundred enter. In cash flow two, not on the frequency, and in cash flow three enter one thousand enter. Is it done? Now there is a NPV button on the right hand side of cash flow. So press the NPV button. Now say ten enter. Say ten enter. Press downward arrow. It will show you NPV is zero, and press compute. It will directly throw answer of seven twenty two. 
right? But you should know what the cash flow function of your calculator was doing. What your calculator did, it took present value of 800, 900, 1000. It added them up and then it reduced 1500 so that we got NPV of 722. Are we doing fine here? So, <coughs> have you already written formula of NPV? Present value of inflow minus present value of outflow. And what would be the decision rule? That if NPV is positive, that means we are receiving, that means we are receiving more than what we've invested and therefore the project should be <coughs> undertaken. Now the next number, understand this carefully. See in India, 2001 or maybe 2002 till last quarter of 2007, first quarter of 2008, we had a really long bull rally in Indian markets, which means the markets were continuously on spike, right? irrespective of what was happening in the markets, the markets were always increasing. Now, a lot of retail investors got excited somewhere around 2005. So this was the period when a lot of retail investors kept on coming in the market. And of course, in 2008, all of us know what happened. Now, what happened in that period is a lot of uh, people who were involved in selling personal loans, they came up with innovative ideas of selling. And one popular idea was that you identify an employee, let's say, who's making about uh, 15, 20 lakhs or 1.5 million a uh, year. You go to him, you tell him that uh, we can offer you a bank loan. Okay, so let's say we can offer you a bank loan of 100 at the rate of 14%. You take this amount from us and you simply put that amount into equity markets. Okay, so put that money into stock markets and choose the worst possible stock that you can choose. Even in that case, you can easily expect to earn 20% right? because the markets itself, they are rallying. So no matter where you put, put your money in, it is definitely going to get you 20%. So let's assume that that 20% analysis was correct, which means by the end of the year, that 100 will become 120 which means this person who's taken the loan without any of his own investment, how much is he making? About 6 lakhs. Does it seem like a good proposal? Yes or no? How many of you feel yes? How many of you feel no? Is it a good idea? What do you think? Huh? Yes. So, we are not sure whether it is actually going to be 120, isn't it? It might be 130, it might be 110. But as long as you are earning more than 14%, it seems like a good idea. Right? Which means if this was true, if you could actually earn 20%, then maybe it's an excellent idea. Now, let us see the same scenario from a business perspective. Let us say there is a business model where you are taking loan worth 100 from a bank at the rate of 14%. You put that money into your business and by the end of the year, it gets you 120. Good idea? Yes, because we are earning more than what we have invested. This rate of return that we have earned in the corporate finance world, this rate of return is called as internal rate of return or we would simply be calling this as IRR. And this rate of return which is costing us on that 100 in corporate finance world, this number would be called as cost of capital. And this will help us build a thumb rule that as long as IRR is more than cost of capital, the project seems to be a good idea because we are earning more than what we have rate at which we have borrowed or what is our cost. Are we fine with this? So write down this quickly. Have we done? Now there is a direct function available in your Texas calculator to help you calculate numbers like IRR. So what I want you to do is press the cash flow button again. Once you press the cash flow button, it will again show you CF0. Then say second clear work. 
second clear work will delete the memory in case if there was anything previously saved then in cash flow zero how much did we invest in this scenario at time zero we invested 100 so say 100 negative enter 100 then you have to use a plus minus button which is in the last column use that and then say enter have you done that now press downward arrow and come on to cash flow one how much have we received at time one 120 so say 120 enter but keep it positive this time once you've done that on the right hand side you would see a IRR button after NPV press the IRR button and then say compute it will show you IRR of 20% so it is really really important that going forward you'd always interpret IRR as the rate of return that you are going to earn on a project there are a lot of technical definitions of IRR and I'll come to that part later on but the way you interpret this number in the market that how much will I earn on this project and in this case you're earning 20% and as long as you're earning more than your cost of capital the project is financially feasible are we good so let's practice a few more questions around this let me plot some cash flows here this is time 0 1 2 3 and 4 minus 1000 200 300 400 500 question number 1 calculate irr of this particular project question number 2 if cost of capital is 10% what would be the NPV of the project How much is the error? 12.82 and what would be the NPV? 17.71.7 How many of you got 12.82? Okay and 71.7 Let's do one more example. Do you want me to help you with this? Anyone? Let's do one more. This is cash flow 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1000, 700, 800, 900. First thing that you do is calculate NPV of this project if cost of capital is 5% if your discount rate is 5% calculate NPV of this project 1169 let's make your cost of capital as 10 so just press the NPV button and make your I as 10 9 73 let's make cost of capital as 20 percent calculate NPV 659 what you can clearly see here as cost of capital is increasing your NPV is decreasing because your bank is eating out your profit make sense they are charging you higher amount of cost and therefore your net value which is being added to your business is decreasing let us make this as 30 percent calculate NPV now 421 let's make this as 50 percent NPV again 88 let's make this as 53 percent okay 58 percent 
minus eight. Now observe this carefully. Somewhere between fifty three and fifty eight, your NPV crossed from being positive to negative, which means there was some rate between this where your NPV was exactly zero. Let's try to find out how much is that. Let's try fifty seven as the cost of capital. Positive two point nine. So fifty seven point let us say two five percent zero point one three so it's almost zero so somewhere around a discount rate of fifty seven point two five percent your NPV is getting to zero now <coughs> compare this with the earlier bank example from bank we took a loan at the rate of fourteen percent and we invested in the market at the rate of 20% therefore we earn positive what if we invested in the market exactly 14% then how much would be the npv zero. npv is zero because whatever we are earning that is being given to the bank isn't it so this 57.25 is that rate which you are earning on the project that if you give to the bank your npv is going to be zero are you following what i am trying to say here so in the previous example we earned 20% on the stock market investment if you give 20% to the bank your earnings are zero which means in this particular example if we give 57.25% of the bank to the bank then your earnings would be zero so this is your irr and irr is always calculated using trial and error method okay so now i want you to press the irr button and then press compute 57.26 so then write down the technical definition of irr first first point irr is the rate of return irr is the rate of return earned IRR is the rate of return earned on a project. Okay, now this is the single most important definition and interpretation. This is also more important if you are a MBA finance, uh, if you are already MBA finance, or if you are a CA student, because I am sure you must have learned the other definitions of IRR. Okay, so next time you see IRR, the simple way at which you are going to look at it is: this is what I am earning on this project. Are we fine? Second definition: IRR is that rate at which IRR is that rate at which present value of inflows, present value of inflows are same as. Tell me, okay. present value of outflows. present value of inflows and outflows would be same and therefore the third point if irr is same as cost of capital if irr is same as cost of capital npv will be zero are we doing fine here so today we are going to look at five metrics through which we can take decisions we've already seen two of them which was the first one npv and what simple decision rule we said for npv is if npv is positive that means i am receiving more than what i am paying project should be taken second rule is irr where we said if irr is more than cost of capital then the project should be taken now one sentence one sentence uh, that you would write down below this if so write it write it down like this if irr is greater than cost of capital npv is always greater than 0 do you agree with this 
so again that analogy will come in handy if we were earning 20% and if to the bank we were paying 14% we are always going to have positive amount so as long as this 20% or this value is more than 14 your NPV is always going to be positive are you fine with this next example in the series now is called as or next metric is payback period payback period is simply don't write just understand payback period is simply the time taken to recover cash flow invested so you you start a new project you invested 500 into that project first year you received 300 in cash second year received 200 then in two years you've recovered your entire investment make sense to you so we would now calculate payback period let us say for a MBA program in India How many MBAs here? Okay. No offense to anyone. This is generic calculations. So now, tell me what is the typical uh, typical fee that we are looking at for MBA program in India? How much? Fifteen lakhs. Ten lakhs. Twelve lakhs. Seven lakhs. Okay. Let us let us keep this fee equal to ten lakhs. Is there any other cost involved? Is there any other cost involved? Sorry? Accommodation, okay. So let's let's keep this as 12. Let's keep it simple. Maybe inclusive of accommodation, food, and whatever extra <coughs> expenses you have. All inclusive it is 12. Is there any other cost? Huh? loan uh -huh, okay loan on the interest right fine yeah let's keep that in mind what else opportunity cost so see now a lot of colleges i see a lot of uh, it employees with experience of two three years uh, they will start picking up an mba program right so they quit their jobs and then they go to do a full-time mba so when they do that by the time they quit their job, they're already making about five to ten, five to six lakhs per annum. So salary of those two years, which is in finance, we call this as opportunity cost. Do you agree with me? That had they not done the MBA, then there wouldn't have been any loss of this salary. So let us keep that for two years cumulative as ten lakhs. So the total cost that we are looking at is twenty-two lakhs. Out of this twenty-two, this twelve is called as the explicit cost. Explicit means you could see it explicitly, whereas this 10 is called as the implicit cost. Now see what happens is, let's say your MBA program gets over and on an average, let's say the candidate gets a salary of 8 lakh per annum. Good enough? Now, this is time 0, this is year 1, this is year 2. When he quit his job, what was the salary being paid to him? Five. What is the rate at which we would expect his salary to grow if he doesn't do an MBA? Five percent? Ten percent? Okay. Let us say he's a lucky chap. We'll let it grow at ten percent. So five and a half. And let's keep it six. We'll round it off. So which means had he not done an MBA, his salary otherwise would have been 6 lakhs. With his new MBA, now he can earn about 8 lakhs or 800,000. 1 lakh is 100,000. So which means the relevant decision making for us is not the salary that he's receiving which is 800,000. The relevant decision making metric is 200,000 or 2 lakhs. Have you an agreement on this? And the amount which is being invested is 22, which is 2.2 .2 million. And therefore, the time it would take to recover him, his entire salary is 22 divided by 2. That would be 11 years. This is called as the payback period. Okay. 
have still been very lenient with the calculation otherwise the payback period could also be 24 25 years of course what we are also ignoring is the rate at which the salary will grow is it and we are keeping that salary quotient constant are you fine are you fine with the concept hmm? so let's calculate payback period for a project this is time zero let's say you invest 500 time one you receive 200 then 250 150 400 What is the payback period? Six two three three two point three three. Two point three three. See now, how would you do it? You want to recover a total amount of five hundred. By the end of first year, you've recovered 200. So let me write down a cumulative cash flow here. By the end of second year, how much in total have you received? 200 plus 250, total you've received is 450. By the end of third year, total amount received is 600. So somewhere between year two and year three, you've recovered your 500. So what we will have to use is a simple interpolation technique. From 450, how much is the shortfall that we have 50 and in year 3 how much we have received 150 so we will say in 12 months after year 2 we have received 150 but we need just 50 how many months will be required make sense and that would be 4 months and 4 months means 0.33 or one third of the year which means your payback period is 2.33 Three, three years are we okay here now the good news for you is that your calculator is equipped to do this calculation so press the cash flow button press the cash flow button then say second clear work go on to cash flow zero 500 negative enter come on to cash flow one 200 enter cash flow 2 250 enter 3 would be 150 enter and 4 would be 400 enter and then press the NPV button keep on pressing downward arrows go to PB PB is a payback period and then say compute is it getting you the answer Yes, no. Hmm? Okay. Now observe this. Have you written down this example? Hmm? Write it down quickly, please. Heading is payback period. Done writing. Now observe carefully. While calculating payback period, did we use this 400 anywhere? Yes or no? Instead of 400, had this been 1400, will that make any difference? It will not. And that's the biggest drawback of payback period. That it does not really tell you how profitable the project is. It just tells you how quickly you're recovering your money. Right? So, two important testable points. Write down. Drawback of payback period. Drawback. Drawbacks of payback period. Number one. It is number one, it is a poor measure, it is a poor measure of profitability. It is a poor measure of profitability. Do you agree? So, if there were two projects, one with the cash flow of 400, other with 1400, it will not tell us which one is more profitable. Second, it ignores the cash flows it ignores the cash flows 
after payback period it ignores the cash flows after payback period right so it doesn't really care what's happening after year 3 and third can you guess what it is what are we missing on in this calculation time value of money third it ignores tvm it ignores time value of money are we doing okay here yeah? next metric give the heading in your notes discounted payback period discounted payback period so let us say your cash flows are like this this is time 0 1 2 3 500 3000 300 and 300 now this time the payback period calculation is going to be exactly same except for the fact that we are going to consider time value of money so let us assume discount rate is 10% can you calculate a dcf for me a discounted cash flow for 300 at the rate of 10% for one year can we do that so tell me how much is that second clear tvm 300 is the future value 1 as n 10 as iy compute present value how much kapil 270 2 now just make 2 as n because this is coming 2 years from now so make 2 as n compute present value 247 and make 3 as n compute present value 225 now we would calculate cumulative dcf we'll just add up these amounts so 272 plus 247 how much is that 519 and 519 plus 225 744 now when is your 500 being recovered in this series between year 1 and year 2 and very close towards year 2 so your payback period is one year plus a few months do you agree with this your 500 is being recovered here so your payback period is one year plus a few months so how do we find it out by the end of year 1 we've recovered 272 How much extra do we need to reach 500? 228. So in 12 months, the total recovery is 247. How much? How many months for 228? And just do proportionate calculations. 0.9 year. Oh, this is in months. 12 months, 247. How much to recover 228? Give me answer in number of months. 11.07 months, and 11.07 as a ratio to 12 is how many years? 0.9, 0.92 years. Now again, the good news is that your calculator can do this calculation directly. So you can press the cash flow button, say second clear work. insert these cash flows in your financial calculator these cash flows here insert the discount rate and solve for dpb dpb comes after pb the answer you would get would be 1.92 or 91 are we doing good should we move on to next measure now so the last measure is profitability index let us say there are two projects that we have right now project a and project b these projects are 
mutually exclusive can you tell me what it means mutually exclusive means yes either you can select a or you can select b you cannot do both of them together one of the two or only one of them so let us say npv of project a is 1 million and npv of project b is 1.5 million now tell me which project seems more attractive b how many if you feel b yes why because the npv is higher and that's the rule that if projects are exclusive mutually exclusive we will generally select the one which is got highest npv because we are receiving 1.5 extra today but let's have some more details what is the formula for npv calculations present value of inflow minus present value of outflow so let me write down present value of outflows first how much we have to invest at time zero in project a we have to invest 10 in project b we have to invest 1000 million and present value of inflows this is 11 million and this is 1001.5 million now look at the numbers carefully and now tell me which project looks more smarter project a because even though npv is smaller the amount of investment that we making is substantially smaller do you agree with me now assume a scenario where a firm has access to unlimited capital that means it can take loan of as much amount as required in that case will that firm prefer to do a or b they are exclusive so we cannot do both should we do a or b i'm repeating my question again listen to me carefully the firm has access to unlimited amount of capital it can take from the market as much capital as required these are exclusive projects that means we can either do a or we can do b so now tell me how many few feel that firm should do project b how many few feel that firm should do project a okay the answer is b if you have access to unlimited capital then it doesn't matter how much you are investing because after taking care of all the cost of capital you are left with 1.5 extra following me whereas here you are left with only one extra so therefore you do b but in real world scenario there is no firm in the world which has got access to unlimited capital there would always be limitation on how much we can invest and therefore if you have access to limited capital which scenario is called as capital rationing where you use your capital in the smartest possible fashion this number is more suitable and we can prove this by calculating a number called profitability index which is simply a ratio of present value of inflows divided by present value of outflows and this case it would be calculated as 11 by 10 Thousand and one point five divided by thousand, and of course this is better. So let's consolidate what we've learned so far. Maybe you can close down your notes for a minute. First, we started our discussion on understanding what was corporate finance. It is that area of finance where you help companies take decisions about. different metrics how to raise capital how to invest how to manage working capital whether they should pay dividend how to do business ethically all those areas then we started with capital budgeting the idea of capital budgeting is to analyze different ideas and decide whether they are financially feasible there are five key metrics to which we take decisions the first one was net present value or npv 
the decision rule was that there could be two scenarios if the projects are independent or they are mutually exclusive if projects are independent which meaning of which is they are not related to each other then the decision rule is we will select all those projects which have positive npv but if the projects are mutually exclusive then we will select the project which has got highest npv because that's the maximum addition to the wealth of the firm so that was npv and the formula was present value of inflow minus present value of outflow then the next metric we learned was irr irr is the rate of return earned on a project it is the rate at which mukesh rate at which npv is zero which means present value of outflow and out inflow and outflow are same then payback period discounted payback period time taken to recover your cash flow payback period and discounted payback period both of them are poor measure of profitability and they ignore the cash flow after the payback period and then the last one which was profitability index which is calculated as present value of inflow divided by present value of outflow and we can use profitability index for ranking different projects are we together on this so let's make a big flow chart let's consolidate everything that we've learned so for every topic at cfl level 1 we would be building a flow chart and these flow charts will come in extremely handy a day before the exams when you want to revise the entire subject so capital budgeting five key metrics first one is npv second one is irr then payback period discounted payback period and profitability index the formula for npv was present value of inflows minus present value of outflows present value of inflows minus present value of outflows decision rule for independent projects select if npv is greater than 0 and for mutually exclusive projects Can you tell me mutually exclusive select highest npv project select highest npv project the calculation is such not such a big trouble for the simple reason that your calculator can do it for you now one testable sentence that i want you to write down is npv assumes so i'm going to write it here npv assumes that cash flows are reinvested npv assumes that cash flows are reinvested at cost of capital npv assumes that cash flows are reinvested at cost of capital as of now you would not understand what this means i think most of you don't even have calculators today but we will we are going to flag this number maybe tomorrow morning uh, we'll start the session with this sentence the next metric is irr so irr there were three interpretations the first rate that we have earned second rate at which present value of inflow is same as present value of outflow rate at which present value of inflow is same as present value of outflow third rate 
at which NPV is 0. Rate at which inflow is same as outflow, rate at which NPV is 0. Now again we will write couple of uh, important sentences with IRR. Number 1. IRR assumes cash flows are reinvested cash flows are reinvested at IRR. These are the kind of areas that CFA Institute loves. Okay, so on the exam don't expect that they will give you numbers and ask you to calculate NPV. That's very very unlikely to happen especially based on how the papers have been constructed. So the kind of questions you would expect on the exam are the sentences like these that NPV is making an assumption that cash flows are being reinvested at cost of capital. IRR is making an assumption that cash flows are being reinvested at IRR. On both the sentences we have to spend significant amount of time tomorrow morning. Write down below this issue of no IRR or multiple IRR. issue of no IRR or multiple IRR. Maybe somewhere around it you can write down unconventional cash flow on the same sentence. Unconventional cash flow. So that you remember why this happens. Yet to be discussed but write down to make your notes complete. Unconventional cash flows. Are we fine here? Then payback period. Simple explanation time taken to recover investment time taken to recover investment and testable points here number one poor measure of profitability a poor measure of profitability number two ignores cash flow after payback period and number three ignores TVM. First one was poor measure of profitability. Second ignores cash flow after payback period and number three it ignores time value of money. Then discounted payback period it considers TVM. Discounted payback period, it considers time value of money, otherwise everything else is same. Now again a testable sentence is, both payback period and discounted payback period are good measure of liquidity. Good measure of liquidity. All of you understand what is liquidity? Liquidity means being able to generate cash quickly or ability to convert into cash. So see the benefit of PB and DPB is it will tell you that within two years I'll be able to recover my cash or within three years I'll be able to recover my cash and therefore both of these are good measure of liquidity. Profitability index the formula is present value of inflow divided by present value of outflow right below that used to rank projects right, we can give ranking in terms of which project is more efficient and below that again a testable point if PI is greater than 1 NPV is always greater than 0. If profitability index is greater than 1, NPV is always greater than 0. Are we in agreement here? Yes. Why? Because the formula for PI is inflow divided by outflow. 
it would be more than one if inflows are more than the outflows and that would automatically make your NPV greater than zero.